All right, so in this video, what we're going to do is practice a lot of the things that we have been learning this week. And um, for numbers one, two, and three, we're going to determine which of the given values makes the equation true. But before we actually practice that, let's review some vocabulary. Now, it says this is an equation. So the first question I want to ask you is, what makes this an equation? What part of this makes it an equation? Go ahead and answer that for me. All right, if you said the equal sign, you're right. If you, something has an equal sign and both sides are equal to each other, that's an equation. Um, now, this is another part of the equation. This is a part of the equation, and this is part of the equation. So these three different things have a special name because they are part of an equation separately. What is that called? Go ahead and answer that for me. You're right. That is called a term. There are three terms in this equation. All right, so what about just this one left side? What do we call the left side of an equation? We're ignoring the equal sign, just these things here, this plus this and this. What's that called? Very good. That's an expression. So this expression is equal to that expression, and then altogether that's an equation. All right, so we have a couple more words, uh, three more words, actually, I want you to review. Uh, this letter B has a special label as well. It represents an unknown amount. What do we call a letter that represents an unknown amount? And sometimes it could be a symbol like an open square, something like that. What is that? Very good. That's called a variable. So this variable plus this number. This number is by itself. It's not multiplying a, a, a variable or anything. It's by itself. What do we call a number in an expression that just stands by itself? Very good. That's a constant. That's exactly right. Now, this other number is also by itself, but it has a different special name because it's the answer to an addition problem. What do we call the answer to an addition problem? You're right, that's called a sum. So you can see in this very simple number sentence, there's a lot of vocabulary that we need to understand. Okay, enough about vocabulary. What we're going to do now is we are going to actually solve the problem. We're going to, we're going to actually do number one. So what we're going to do, uh, and tomorrow on the mid-chapter test, I expect this to be, be done neatly and carefully on notebook paper. Or if you want to print this paper out, fine. But... You can just use notebook paper. It has to be neat and it has to be uh, readable, though. So make sure that the picture is clear and make sure that I can read what you're writing. Now, I want to see all your work, even though we're going to use the number two, the number three, and the number four to replace the letter B to see which one makes the sentence true. And we could probably do this in our head, but I want to see the proof. So we're going to take the equation. We're going to write B plus um, 12 equals 16, and we're going to one at a time replace the letter B with each number. So we're going to write 2 plus 12, and then we're going to write equals, sorry. Then we're going to write 3 plus 12, and then we're going to write 4 plus 12. Okay, so go ahead and answer this for me. What is 2 plus 12? Answer that, please. Very good. That answer is 14, and that does not equal um, 16, so this is not the right answer. So what about 3 plus 12? What is that? What's the sum of 3 plus 12? Very good. That is 15, but unfortunately it is not the number 16, so that is wrong. What is 4 plus 12? That is 16. So this is the one that's correct. So we're going to circle 4 plus 12 equals 16, and that's the answer to number 1. Okay, for the next two problems, it's, problems, it's asking you to actually solve it mentally. Um, so let's write down number 4. Whoops, hello. Let's turn the pen on first. So if I write down the number 4, 8p equals 72. Now this is an equation because it has an equal sign, but this particular term has a special name as well. 
what do we call this number that is multiplying whatever this unknown uh, amount represented by this variable? What do we call the number right next to a variable that means a multiplication problem? Go ahead and answer that for me, please. Very good. That's called a coefficient. So 8 times p equals 72. So now we're going to use our, our basic facts. What do we multiply? times p that equals 72. So I'm going to go ahead and write p equals down here, but I'm going to write 8 and then an empty space equals 72. And let's think about our basic facts. Now if you need to, you can skip count, you could use uh, tic-tac facts, whatever you need to do, but if you know your basic facts, we know that 8 times 10 is 80, and that's not 80, it's less than 80, so the actual answer is 9. So p is going to be equal to 9. And do you see how I've shown my work? And it's legible, so that's also something that we need to happen. All right, so for number 7, 8, uh, 9, actually through 9, 10, 11, all of them, you're going to solve each equation, and then you're going to check the solution. So actually, I do expect you to actually check the solution by putting what you think the answer is back in, and I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, so for this equation here, it says y plus 7 equals 18. So over here, I'm going to very neatly write, and I have a habit of circling my numbers. You don't have to do that. So I'm going to write y uh, plus 7 equals 18. Okay, so one of the strategies that we've used this week is inverse operations. So if I want to get rid of this plus 7 and leave this y by itself, I'm going to do the opposite. So what would be the opposite of plus 7? Answer that for me, please. You're right. It's going to be minus 7. So if we do plus 7 minus 7, this creates something called what that is equal to 0. That's right. It's a 0 pair. So this goes away, leaving only the letter y, the variable y. So if we've done minus 7 to this side, we also have to do minus 7 to that side. That's called the subtraction property of equality. So what is 18 minus 7? Go ahead and answer that for me. That is 11. So this is the solving part. Now we've got to go back and check it. So what we're going to do is write y. No, we're not going to write y. We're going to uh, replace y with 11, and then we're going to write plus 7 equals 18. And what is 11 plus 7? It's 18. I'm getting outside the lines a little bit. You'll do better than me. Okay, so that checks out. So that is correct. All right, so number 10 is a word problem. And don't panic. We can handle this. So when we have a word problem, the first thing we're going to do is figure out what is unknown that they want us to find out. And then we're going to assign a variable to it. Then we're going to draw a picture using a bar diagram. And then when we fill that out, we're going to create an equation that will help us solve the problem. So we're going to take all these words and basically uh, reduce it down to a few symbols and numbers, and we're going to you know, be able to actually find out what the unknown amount is. In a game, Hallie has 35 cards. This is 12 more than Felix. So I'm going to stop and think, okay, so who's got more cards? Hallie has 35 cards. This is 12 more than Felix. So if we're putting this in a bar diagram, we need to remember Hallie is, has a larger amount than Felix. And this is write and solve an addition equation to find the number of cards that Felix has. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my paper here, and I'm going to very neatly write uh, 10 when I turn the pen on. So I'll write 10. Okay, so down here, I'm going to begin my addition equation. So something, something, plus something equals whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and begin to draw my picture. Got something big. Uh, I think I remember from the problem that there were going to be two pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and make two pieces here. All right, so going back to the problem, it says Haley has 35 cards. This is 12 more than Felix. So um, if I come up here, what number should I put above the line? Answer that for me, please. 
Very good. 35, because this is Hallie's got 35 and Felix has less. Now, um, you know, we skipped a step for the um, variable. The, okay, so it's asking the number of cards that Felix has. So what letter do you think we should use for the cards that Felix has? Go ahead and answer that for me. All right, so I'm going with C, but I could go with F for Felix, but it doesn't really matter. So C is going to represent the unknown amount of cards, but we do know that if we have C and then we also have 12, these two things together are going to make 35. So we're going to do our addition problem. So C plus 12 equals 35. That's what the picture is showing me. C plus 12 equals 35. Now we need to solve this. So if we have 12 items here and we want to get rid of them because we want C to be by itself, what do we need to do to this plus 12? Answer that for me, please. Okay, we're going to use the subtraction property of equality, and we're going to subtract 12 from this side. It creates a zero pair, and that gets rid of that and so if we do that to this side, what do we have to do to this other side? Answer that for me. Very good. We are going to also subtract 12. And 5 minus 2 is 3. And 3 minus 1 is 2. Now since we have 23 as our answer, let's go ahead and check that that's right. So instead of C, we're going to go ahead and write 23 plus 12. Okay, 3 plus 2 is 5, 2 plus 3 is, excuse me, 2 plus 1 is 3, and that is what Hallie has, so that is correct. All right, so tomorrow we're going to be doing our mid-chapter test. Please make sure that you show all your work, that you um, do your best job, that you write neatly, cleanly. Please make sure you take a picture that's in focus so I can actually grade it. Also, turn your test in before midnight on the day that's assigned. Do not wake a full week and then come to me saying, Miss Bradshaw, it's locked. Well, you should do it on the day that I assign it to you. All right. Have a lovely day. I will hopefully see you tomorrow. Thank you.